All right, we should be back. Sweet, I see the live thing on the top yeah. right. So I think we're good. There we go. So we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Hi, so we're back. We're back with Cameron Fleming. Julie just gave us a great introduction of him. Um, and we heard that he's doing good in Atlanta right now. So let's keep going. Cameron, we heard you were born at Fort Hood and your mom retired as an army colonel. So can you tell us what was it like growing up in a military family? Um, first of all, I mean, y'all y'all shouted out my mom, Colonel Bond, but uh, my dad also retired as a Lieutenant Colonel. So gotta give him some love. I'm sure he'll see this and be mad if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Especially since I'm staying at his house. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely but, um, give some love to your dad. We're just really familiar with your mom. Of course, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed growing up a military brat. I got to live in a whole bunch of places. Um, I think the hardest part is everybody asks you where you're from, and I can't really give you a, a straight answer. Um, I always say I'm from Houston because that's where I graduated from high school, but I, I mean, I love the experience, like going to different parts of the country, even getting outside to, to Germany for a little bit when I was quite young and um, just learning to meet new people, learning to be a little bit more social, getting out of my comfort zone because I was um, bouncing around a lot. Hey, so for a lot of those out there that that probably aren't aware, uh, uh, Colonel Fleming or Colonel Bond, now she used to work at the exchange. So that's why we're, we're familiar. That's how we got Cameron on. And, and we're familiar with, with um, you know, his, his, his achievements and everything he's done. Or she was a very proud mom. And I got a question. She always said when you PCS, you, you just got to a base or installation and you'd be like, all right, I'm ready to move. Was, was, was moving the best part of it? She said you truly enjoyed that. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I think it was just so cool that I could, uh, be somewhere and be somewhere else. I, I kind of like the uncertainty, the, um, the new people, the new faces. I mean, cause when you think about somewhere like Virginia, where I lived, it's so much different than Kansas, than Texas and so on and so forth. So it was always awesome to, to move and meet new people. Outstanding. So, so Cameron, we know you love our nation's war fighters. You obviously grew up a, a military child and moved a lot with your family. Uh, you're a big military supporter. What what words of inspiration do you have for our heroes out there at the front line? Um, one, just uh, thank you so much for all that y'all are doing, especially during this trying time. Um, I guess I would say just keep pushing on and it's going to get better. And, and thank y'all for making it better. A great shout out, Cam. Um, we know that you likely spent some time at the exchange while you were growing up. We have 33,000 associates all over the world. They're working hard for the troops during the pandemic. We're mission essential. We're still open serving warfighters and their families. And 85% of our associates have a military connection. So what words of encouragement and hope do you have for exchange associates during this time? Um, again, I'd just like to start off by saying thank you for um, for going out to work. I mean, I know how uncertain the times are and thank you for showing up and providing all these military families across the, um, the US and the world, just um, these services that are kind of help normalize a thing, especially for military um, families and be safe. Thank you. Uh, and just more, just nothing but appreciation from me. Outstanding. So, so Cam, when I called you uh, a couple of weeks ago to set up this interview, I was like, all right, between, you know, we usually do our interviews between the hours of 10 and 2. And, and you were like, oh, man, yeah, I work out during that time. And I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, four hours? I was like, man, I, I, you're an elite athlete, right? You, you're in the NFL. So how do you stay fit? And, and, you know, the same goes for military members, right? We have to stay fit to fight. What does your fitness regimen look like? What, what tips do you have for us regular athletes who just go out there, you know, maybe play ball on the weekends or <laughs> anything of that nature? Um, well, I'm, I'm sure for for most of the military, you know, that PT test, the, the lumen of that PT test always keeps you in very good shape. But I mean, I think um, one of the most important things or the two most important things were staying in shape, especially when you may not have access to all the facilities that you usually would, would be um, keep working on your core. That's always the... Um, mm -hmm the center of your body, you know, there's where a lot of strength is and it's going to keep you healthy and fit and make you feel a lot better, trust me. 
and um, cardio, just getting out there, whether it's running or playing basketball, or I mean, you can't really play basketball right now, or biking or something like that, where where you can um, get, get your heart rate up and keep moving and keep active. So what, what do you camp? Your, your mom just texted me. She was like, why aren't you live? I was like, we're live, we're live. I just had to text her. <laughs> but what do you, so what does your workout look like as a, as you know, an NFL player? What does that consist of? You, you work out like four hours a day. What, what, what is that like? Give us some insight um, into your life and how, how that, what do you do right now? Well, I would say four hours is a little exaggerated. I, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't go to two because we had, um, we had football meetings beforehand. So, um, so I probably work out for two and a half, close to three hours a day, um, starting at nine. And I, it always starts with some kind of um, dynamic warm up. Make sure you're loose. Make sure you're ready to push your body to the lengths that you um, that you need to. And then after we warm up, we'll do some kind of cardio, whether it's wind sprints or getting on the bike. And yeah, today we we did the bike, which was uh, very challenging. I mean, much much tougher than wind sprints. So I always watch out for the bike. Um, and then, uh, after that, we, uh, we usually do a total body lift. So we'll start with the arms, we'll do something and then we'll do something to correct the movement. So if we're pushing, we have to pull and so on and so forth. So if we have to do bench press, then we have to do pull-ups or something along that, um, the, those lines. And then we'll go to our legs and then we'll do something, um, kind of total body, a mix of conditioning and weight training with kettlebells, you know, um, pulls and squats and all that kind of stuff. So it's um it's pretty it's pretty immersive. Wow, wow. And so what is um you know that's bur you're burning a lot of calories obviously two and a half hours of working out. What's what's a diet consist of for you? What do you what do you usually snack on? Um, eat? I eat a lot. Uh, I'm sure you're not surprised by that. <laughs> <laughs> I try to um while I'm in training I try to stay away from a lot of carbohydrates. I mean I'm not I'm doing cardio but I'm not running miles. It's more um sprints and stuff like that. So I just eat a lot of meat, a lot of steak, chicken. Um, I usually like it on the grill because there's a lot less cleanup and stuff like that. <laughs> so, good point. <laughs> um, a, lot, a lot of grilled chicken, a lot of grilled steak, and a ton of veggies. Just more veggies than you would you would think. Excellent. So, Cameron, you were part of two Super Bowl champion teams. Um, can you share what that experience was like? Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, um, it's something that you grow up watching and you see every year. I mean, everybody has a Super Bowl party and to, to know that when um, when everybody's at home eating chicken wings and stuff like that, that they're <laughs> watching you, it's um, it's a little surreal. It's extremely nerve wracking. Your adrenaline's pumping the whole time, but it's it's so much fun to go out there and compete and know you're competing to be the, the best team in the world for that year. And then, you know, um, so you're on the offensive line, right? Um, mm -hmm. What what was it like to be protecting, you know, well-known players like Tom Brady? Um, I'm, when I was uh, younger, when I was a rookie in the league and you meet Tom Brady, you meet somebody who's been doing it for so long, it's like, wow, like, that's that's like a, that's a star. Like, I'm just in the NFL and that's a, that's a superstar. But I mean, after a while, football becomes football. You kind of just like gel in and normalize and you don't even really think about it on such a grand scheme. It's like, oh, I got to protect my quarterback. Wow. Hey, do you have a, since we're talking about Super Bowl rings, do you have any on you? I don't. They're all back in Texas and I'm in Atlanta right now. Oh, man. Uh, you should have you told my mom. She, could, she, she has them, so she could probably pop them out. Uh, she just, she actually says hello. She says, hey, Cameron Fleming. She just checked in. Okay. <laughs> she used my whole name. Hmm. She did. She, she did. Use trouble. <laughs> hey, she didn't so say we have, here, we have a question here from Blake A. Richardson. He asked, does Cameron take any supplements? If so, what? Um, as far as uh, supplements, I, I take protein mainly. Um, a lot of people do BCAAs before they work out, which is um, a good way to get your um their branch chain amino acids i'm not 100 percent sure on all the the whys and what's but i'll take those sometimes but usually i just stick with collagen protein and whey protein just because um it helps you with the recovery and muscle building once you work out wow wow that yeah, well you heard it there first uh, uh blake hopefully that helps out you're trying to get big and, and just for those out there that aren't sure you probably can't tell 
You're you're about six six and three hundred and twenty pounds, Cameron. Yep, that's about right. Is that true, or is that like inflated on the football stats? Um, <laughs> I will say that I'm technically six five, but you know I'm always wearing shoes, so I, I like to call myself six six. <laughs> <laughs> So a couple of questions out here from the from the field. Um, someone asked, do you do you do you think the Patriots will still be successful with, with only Belichick leading them and you know a loss of some of the star players? Do you still think they'll still be successful? Um, it's hard to speculate. You know, the the NFL is such a competitive league and it changes every year. That's why even as good as the Patriots have been over the past three years, they haven't won the Super Bowl every year because it's just such a competitive league. But um, from my knowledge of the coaches out there, that they'll have a team ready to, to entertain and compete in every football game they're in. And a follow-up question to that is, you know, uh, some people call call Coach Belichick probably one of the greatest, you know, nine Super Bowls, six wins. What's it like, you know, being coached by, by him? Um, I think it's an amazing experience. I mean, he's so knowledgeable. He's a great coach, obviously, just by his, um, his stat line. And um, I really, I really did enjoy it. So Cameron, how, how did you get to be an NFL player? You know, knowing that military kids, they often don't have the consistency that civilian children have. How did you, how did you end up in the NFL? Walk us through. Um, well, I'd say it probably started in high school. Um, I was lucky enough that uh, I only moved once during high school. I moved after my freshman year from Parker Heights down there in Fort Hood to uh, Cypress Creek in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just played football is what I always did. You know, Texas, you kind of have to, it's pretty <laughs> mandatory. And um, I just played and eventually uh, me and my me and my dad drove down from Fort Hood to, uh, to Texas Christian and I got hot, handed a scholarship offer and that after that it kind of um, kept rolling in Decided to go to Stanford. More, more my mom's choice than anybody else's, but uh, she made a great one. So, <laughs> and then, um, and then you know, like um, once you get into college, you realize that you have a chance that you have four years to kind of prove yourself and make a case. I mean, you get that stability you need that you might not have gotten all the way through um, your childhood. And once I once I saw that it was there, I I went for it, and I was fortunate enough to be in the league seven years later. So you started, uh, you started in high school is when you started playing football, not when you were younger. Is that what you say? I started when I was younger, but I always say high school because I didn't like it until I was in high school. Um, it was more like, okay, I'm your six foot, whatever. And so many pounds, like you should probably be playing football. <laughs> so it was, um, it was highly influenced by probably everybody around me to play football, but I didn't really love it until high school. I have a question. Did you ever consider basketball at your height? Did you ever consider that too? Well, um, according to me, I'm a, I was a great high school basketball player, but <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the position that I played, uh, cause I was a center, I'm probably still like six inches too short to, to really play on the next level. Well, you had mentioned Stanford, and we heard a fun fact about you. Uh, we heard that you majored in aeronautics and astronautics at Stanford, and that you wanted to be an astronaut at one point. So why didn't this work out for you? Um, well, just going back to my height, the, the <laughs> max height you can be for an uh, astronaut is 6'4". So that was the probably the nail in the coffin once I figured that out around my second sophomore year in college. And they also um, changed the space program around a little bit, so that six four, that six foot four would probably have been pushing it anyways. So but you are I too tall to be an astronaut. Too tall. <laughs> <laughs> I think football is a good second profession, though. You know. Absolutely, it's clearly working for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing all right. Hey, I'm gonna get um. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna talk about the exchange. You're familiar with the PX, right, Cameron? Of course. You, you used to hang out at the PX, right? Oh yeah, just just browsing the aisles, just hanging out when I was a kid. Now, but I mean, I I definitely have always gone. That's where we always got our um, our stuff from. All right, so here here's the question I was I was ordered to ask. <laughs> oh no, I know exactly. Where this is going. I I told them I said, listen, I am not trying to be like I don't know if you've seen Game of Thrones when the mountain fought the viper. 
I'm not trying to be the viper in this situation because he loses bad. I was like, you sure you want me to ask that? He's not going to get mad. She was like, you know who I'm talking about. Your mom. She's like, go ahead and ask. Don't worry. So tell us about the PX, the sixth grade, and you go Lee cards, you go Lee cards. I don't know how. You know what I'm um, talking about? Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> tell us about that. Oh, wow. Um, so, <laughs> so unfortunately, um, when I was much younger and much more immature, I, uh, I walked into the PX uh, one day and decided to take some Yu-Gi-Oh cards without paying. <laughs> and the, the excellent security at the PX caught me and confronted me. I was with my mom. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take questions about that, but that's, that's about all the story I have about that. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> That's all you remember? I mean, I remember a lot of other things, but <laughs> we'll That's the we'll leave That's the crux of the story. I don't want to talk about the punishments and what I <laughs> Oh, I heard. I heard it was on. I heard it was on. She said she said they had a, I think it had a garage sale that day or something and you helped out and she gave you $30 so she was confused as to why you would put them in your pocket. <laughs> Well, you know, I wanted to buy a memory card, so I used the thirty dollars on a memory card and took a little something extra for me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a letter here. I think I think you sold the BX two hundred dollars. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, your mom. Well, I mean, I think I think that's my mom owes. <laughs> 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 and you still owe um, at Fort Leavenworth. You still owe community service, is what I was told. Because your PCS right doesn't happen. I did. That was very lucky of me. So I didn't get banned from the PX for, I think, I think it was supposed to be like a year or something, but we moved right after. So. All right. We're going to get you on that community service. We'll get you to one of our stores one day. Okay. All we'll right. Pay debt. Maybe 10 years <laughs> later, 15 years later, we're going to get that debt paid. <laughs> Chief, oh my gosh. Hey, so, so what's, um, what's that, what's ahead for you, Cameron? What are you doing? Are you doing any, uh, any, charity work what are you what are you doing to pass the time at home especially at the now that these restrictions are easing up what are you doing at home at home um that is a good question i mean i've been so used to being locked down and shut down that i don't have any like plans to go out but uh my mom has started working for the the american gi forum so i'd like to get a little bit involved with her i mean she's doing such good work i talk to her all the time she's working so hard for these uh for these veterans that I'd like to help her out a little bit. And what does that organization do? The American GI Forum. Do you know about it? They um they provide housing and um uh what was it my mom told me meaningful jobs to to veterans. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> I mean because she made she made sure I put the meaningful in there when um when I asked her all about it when I. <laughs> when she first started working there but yeah she um she does a lot to provide housing for for veterans find them good good places to stay apartments houses whatever and then um and then yeah the finding employment that can sustain them wow that that's that's great well um so what are your plans after after the nfl what do you plan to do after the nfl do you have a that is a good question um I am not sure I'd like to go to business school. I think just to, to get back in that school mode, you know, I haven't really had a, a real job or studied in seven years now. So I don't think I could really remember all the all the things I learned from my aeronautics and astronautics days. Um, so I'd like to go to business school, kind of reset and then figure out what I want to do from there. That, that's all. That's great. That's great. Looks like you have you have something planned out. How many more years do you think you're gonna you gonna are you gonna stay in NFL as long as as long as you could you could take it your body could take it as long as my body can take it and my mind can take it you know it's a tough job so as long as I'm happy and it's still the best job in the world to me then I'll keep doing it and as long as I'm allowed to you know I still got to be employed to do it how does that so how does that work for the fans how, how does that work for people to understand like like right you got to be signed a contract has to be signed or something of that nature correct yeah, um, step one is the to be under contract with a team. And then step two is to go into camp and um, prove that you're worthy of being on the 53-man roster and make the team and hopefully contribute while um, while you're on the team. How, how competitive is that when you go into that camp? Like, is it is it like 
serious? How, how competitive is it to get on that 53-man roster? Um, it's extremely competitive. I mean, you're, you're talking about 90 people going to camp per team and only 53 make it out. And it's every single one of those people's dream to, to play in the NFL and be, um, be on, on Sundays and all that stuff. So um, everybody's out there fighting for their dream every year, you know? And I mean, not to say that it's like aggressively competitive where we don't have fun off the field and talk and make friends and all that stuff. But I mean, when we're on the field, it's all business. Wow. Wow. That must be. So every, every year you have to, do you have, do you get like, I don't want to say a pass per se, but do you get like status because, you know, you won two Super Bowls, you've been to the Super Bowl as opposed to some other players who probably never played in the Super Bowl and you have played, you started in, in the Super Bowl. So do you get like a pass or do you get some form of, uh, you know, recognition like, oh, that's Cameron, you know, you get a Oh, no, not at all. You got to, um, it's the ultimate meritocracy. You earn everything you get. So you have to earn it every year. Oh, wow. Wow. So no pass. No pass. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron, we have a question from Facebook. Shelly is asking, what are you most looking forward to while you're in New York? Oh, um, so just with talking to my, my teammates and all that stuff, I think the number one thing to look forward to in New York is the food. I hear the food is incredible, so diverse. You can get anything you want at any time. So that, I mean, that's what I'm most looking forward to, most definitely, to just eat good food and yeah, let's try some new things. We also had another question earlier from someone who asked, um, having both parents served in the military, did you ever feel inclined um, to also serve? Um, I considered it. I think uh, well, around the time where I considered it, my, my football career was kind of taken off during high school and stuff like that. And um, West Point was on my board for a little bit. I thought it'd be cool to, to go there, but uh, but I think Stanford won out. So I think that was the end of my uh, my military hopes. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. So you've been getting a lot of likes and loves on, on social media and on Facebook. So just wanted to- Awesome, thank y'all. Hey, Cameron, I don't know if you could get upset at this, but there's a, a young lady, I think she's talking trash or she's trying to hit at something. Marissa Connor, um, <laughs> she actually works with the two ladies that are co-hosting here. And I don't know how serious you guys take this. I told you before, I'm not a big football guy, but she says, I think she says it in jest though, because she's a good person. She asked, what's it like playing with cheaters? I <laughs> eat late gate. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't hear the question. I think she said, what's it like playing with winners? I'm pretty sure we won a, won a Super Bowl that year, so. Hey, I think, <laughs> let me share this little piece of info. I think that she is a Cheesehead fan. Oh, okay. She is, yeah. <laughs> she's, just, she's throwing a little bit of shade out there at you, Cameron. Uh, she want to hear that. <laughs> but you, I think you heard that right. What does she want to hear, right? What's it like being a winner? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people want to know that. So it's great. <laughs> <laughs> So on another note, we do have another question um, from Chris Ward. He says, have the players been contacted by the league on when um, they might be able to start again, start training? Um, we, we're still all in the dark about that. I mean, we're all on Zoom meetings, virtual meetings, trying to trying to do a semblance of an off season right now. But, uh, but we all can't wait to get back in the facility and work together and, you know, start gelling as a team. So we would like to know as much as y'all would, trust me. And Roger Saunders is asking if you went to Dodia schools overseas and if so, where did you attend? Um, honestly, when I was, uh, when I was overseas in Germany, I was, I think I left when I was seven years old. So I just did um, kindergarten there and I have no clue. So <laughs> maybe y'all can ask my mom and, and answer that for him, but I have no clue. <laughs> Teresa Smead, who is watching, she really liked what you were saying about having to earn it every year. So that that's something that you said that really resonated with, with the audience. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So do you have, um, are there any uh, other projects that you're working on? Um, you know, any, any 
uh, besides besides the American GI Forum that your mom works at, are there any other charities or any other endeavors that you're taking a part of that you want to share with with everyone out there in Facebook land? Um, honestly, nothing comes to mind right now. Um, probably, yeah, I'm not. I don't have much going on. You know, this this quarantine has kind of stopped all my off season dealings and stuff like that. When I have the free time to do things, so. I've been kind of just focusing on training and all that. So if people wanted to follow you, I'm going to help you out. They can follow you, Cami J. Fresh. Is that, is that, is that? <laughs> <laughs> Cami J. Fresh, yeah. Cami J. Fresh on Instagram. If you want to follow him, you can see all his cool pictures he has with all the stars, all the Coachella, the, the parties, <laughs> the working. Cowboy the Cam. Yeah. <laughs> He's out there on boats. It's a fan know? favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so Chief, are you going to ask him your favorite question? Which one? Oh, Netflix. <laughs> no. Hey, Cam, you watched Tiger King? I have watched Tiger King. Yes. Thoughts? Thoughts? I mean, um, it's an incredible story. It almost seems fake on just how how crazy it got, how deep it got. Um, I'm a little sad that I was so close right there in Dallas. I couldn't go up to the to the tiger uh, uh, sanctuary and um, and be able to see it. I mean, I know the the Carol Baskin fans of the world wouldn't like me saying that, but you know, I think it'd have been definitely worth the entertainment value to to meet Joe Exotic and see all those tiger cubs and stuff like that. <laughs> what are you watching? Any other shows on Netflix? Um, no. Uh, tiger King was the last thing I watched, and so if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Sergeant H has a question, Chief. He said, "Did she do it?" I think he's oh, talking yes. about Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> so Sergeant H works, works with Chief here at Apis. Okay. Uh, Ricky Mayer, I was asked the same thing. Do you think Carol Baskin killed her husband? Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, I don't know all the facts, so I'm not going to comment on it. the The show definitely makes makes it seem like she did, but you know. Netflix entertainment value. Who knows what the what the true story is? <laughs> that is a good answer. Very diplomatic. Um, your mom also says you attended Mannheim Elementary for kindergarten. So that's where you went to school. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> hey, your, your biggest fan, Marissa Connor, uh, the one who asked oh. about the, you know, the, the, the deflate gate. She that's asked, cool. uh, what are your thoughts on the possibility of playing games without fans? That's a good question. Oh. Great um, that is a great question. Much better than your first one. Um, <laughs> I think I think it'd be way different. I mean, it it make away games a lot easier, but it make home games a lot less fun. I wouldn't be a fan of it. I mean, the fan experience is like one of the the great things about playing a live sport. You know, you're out there, the fans are engaged. You you get emotions from the fans because they they go as the game goes and. Yeah, I think it would be it'd be difficult. It'd be difficult to keep up that that passion, that fire without a couple thousand people out there um, cheering us on. I'm gonna be really sad if there is not a football season. Me too. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, I think but, all of Texas will be sad if there's not a football. Yes. All the what? All of Texas in general, where we're at. Oh yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Sure Texas is definitely gonna get hit the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but so, I mean, it's looking good. So hopefully we we have one. What was your experience like playing for the Cowboys? I loved it. I think it was a it's an awesome organization, awesome team to play for. Um, I think one of my favorite parts about playing for the Cowboys is my mom lives just probably forty five minutes away from me, and I got to see her frequently. She came to all the games, and I know that was her oh. favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> And then plus, you know, I'm, um, I claim to be from Texas. You know, I was born on Fort Hood and then graduated high school in Houston. So being back in Texas after so long away when I was in Boston and out in California at Stanford, I was I was so happy to be back. <laughs> it's a special Definitely place excited for about sure. The <laughs> What's your favorite part about Texas? Favorite part about Texas? It's going to sound weird, but I love the highways. I love just driving and <laughs> the high speed limits you know you go to other parts of the country and you feel like you're just crawling but you get back to texas and you can 
get that nice 85 mile per hour speed limit between here and Austin. <laughs> it makes it True. makes Texas not seem so big. You're going to hate New York then. It takes forever <laughs> to get anywhere in New yeah. York. <laughs> Hopefully I'll become more of a fan of public transportation when I get there. <laughs> the next time you come to Dallas, you need to come up and say hi to us in person, assuming we're able to go back in the building and work. <laughs> We'd love Most to see you in person. Of course. Shelly Johnson asked, are you looking forward to being coached by Jason Garrett again? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely part of the reason why I decided to sign with the Giants once, um, once it all went down um was because I was familiar with these coaches and I obviously like them and I'm excited to work with them again. Chief, do you see that question from Pat? Pat, you're killing me, Pat. I, um, hey Cam, I'm gonna ask because <laughs> the fans are asking. <laughs> they put, Love life question mark. I am <laughs> single, free as a bird right now. <laughs> there we go. There you go. You heard it. <laughs> <laughs> right from Cameron, Pat. It's really J Fresh on Instagram, right? <laughs> Hit him up in the DMs. <laughs> Slide in. At Cammy J Fresh, Pat. If you're interested, that's all we can say. <laughs> hey, your mom. I think your mom. Your mom says I will definitely miss Cam being right up the road, and also the great season ticket seating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she got a little spoiled, you know, getting nice seats in uh in Jerry's world. <laughs> That's awesome, Cam. So hey Cam, before we uh you did ladies, do you have any other questions that we may have missed or anything else? Oh, I think we got them all. We just have people watching from all over the world. Someone was watching from Turkey. Um That's lots awesome. of people, lots of people watching and sending you a lot of love and appreciation and for appreciate what you do and for being with us. Thank you. We appreciate you. We have one last thing. Ricky was saying um, when you were talking about the highways, he says true facts and the Bucky's in between. Are you a fan oh, of Bucky's? Always got to stop at a Bucky's. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're not really in the cities except for the one in Denton, but uh but yeah, I love going to Bucky's. It's awesome. Clean as bathrooms, you know. <laughs> best be breakfast burritos. <laughs> Bucky like nuggets. <laughs> I've never had the beaver nuggets. But... <gasps> Next time you're back, Cam, you got to get some. Get your mom to send you some. <laughs> the what? All right, I'll put her on that. <laughs> Would you say the what? The beaver nuggets? Beaver nuggets, yes. <laughs> yeah, Chief. Come on, Chief. <laughs> How long have you been here? I'm like, Cam, I don't know what you're talking about right now. I never heard of them. You ever heard of those, Cam? I've heard of them, but I just never had them. Oh, it never caught my eye when I'm in there. You know, there's so much stuff in there. They look like probably looking at like the welcome people. mats or whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you say? They look like Cheetos or cheese balls. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Cam, uh, you have any last words before we go? We're gonna let you go here. We run up at about 35 minutes, so we want to let you go. I know you're busy. You got a lot of things to do. So any final words for the for the audience out there? Um, one, thank you all for, uh, for tuning in and watching. I want to send another thank you out to all the people at the exchange, working hard, um, take care of military families. Obviously, to all the all the troops, all the, the military people out there, especially the Army. You know, I'm a little biased, but uh, <laughs> definitely to everybody. And, um, <laughs> Thank y'all, especially for, for having me on and being so great. Awesome. You're awesome. You're so fun to talk to. Thank you for making time for us. Oh, no problem. Chief, Thank I you. think you should give Cam a hua. Who? You. you hua. Hua. There we go. I'll do it. Hey. I'm Air Force, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do the hua. I don't mind. Army Air Force Exchange Service, baby. You know, we all in together. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. Hey, Cameron, thanks a lot for being with us. No, it means a lot to the military community. We wish you the best and good luck in New York, all right? Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, take care. Cameron. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>